Hello everyone, back to you into today's video, going to have a look at when it's week to 10 days. In today's video, this could take us to the middle of September. Looks like we've got some very unsettled weather to come, uh, starting at, towards the end of this week into the weekend and on into next week. Could be quite a bit of rain coming up uh, and some quite strong winds as well, actually, uh, as we move into the second week of uh, September. We're going to begin, however, having a look at what's going on in the tropics because, uh, well, all eyes are on Hurricane Irma, so we'll have a look in detail at the latest forecast for Hurricane uh, um, uh, for the beginning of today's video. Uh, so let's get on with it uh, right now. This is the current situation in the tropical Atlantic from the National Hurricane Centre, which is part of uh, NOAA. We've got three disturbances, three areas of interest. Let's deal, deal uh, with uh, this area first of all. That's a disturbance uh, in the Gulf of Mexico close to the uh, southern part of Mexico. That's just an area of thunderstorms. It's not a storm yet. It certainly isn't a hurricane yet, but it does need keeping an eye on. Also got this yellow X over here. That's another disturbance in the tropical Atlantic. Again, just an area of thunderstorms, not uh, a storm at this stage. But because we're having an active hurricane season, it might develop into a storm, possibly a hurricane, uh, in the coming days. So both those areas need watching closely, but the real interest at the moment is what's going on just here, because that is the Category 3 Hurricane Irma. It's still away from any populated areas at the moment, uh, safely in the tropical Atlantic, not causing too many problems, but it is moving ever uh, closer towards, at the moment, the Caribbean. And uh, the latest uh, forecast from the National Hurricane Center, which I can show you just here, is to move this into uh, the Caribbean in the uh, coming day. So this is the current position of Hurricane Irma uh, just here. And see, it's a major hurricane. These M's are telling us that it's a major uh hurricane which is category three or above and this might strengthen to category four or even category five as high as you can go in the coming days so the track is to move it towards the caribbean over the coming days on thursday it's very close to the uh, to the area of uh, puerto rico by friday it's very close to the dominican republic and then by saturday it looks like it's giving a direct hit to cuba because these are holiday destinations so if you know you it's off on holiday to these uh, parts of the caribbean they'll need to be keeping a closer eye on the uh, forecast in the uh, coming uh, in the coming few days now beyond this this is as far as we go with the uh, national hurricane center forecast which is for saturday beyond this some of the models are keen then to start pushing this storm up towards florida this is florida of course just here in the very southeastern tip of america so this is the very latest gfs uh, forecast for um the uh, tropical part of the atlantic ocean this is from the website tropical tidbits.com you can find a link to tropical tidbits on the links page just i've never used these charts before so just to show you where everybody is the british isles and ireland is right up there um this is america of course over here in canada east coast of america is down there and this is the tropical Atlantic Ocean. Perhaps most importantly, this is the current position, um, or it will be the position of Hurricane Irma at uh, midnight. Let's run through with the forecast. Now, we know this is likely to impact the Caribbean islands. So as we move into the middle of the week and on towards Thursday, there it comes heading towards Puerto Rico and uh, very close to the Dominican Republic as well. We get through to the end of it, it takes us to Friday, and uh, then it's impacting Cuba. Big impact on Cuba there on Friday and into Saturday. Remember, this could well be a Category 4 or Category 5 hurricane. So by Saturday, it's firmly got Cuba in its grip. This is Florida uh, just here, of course. And watch what the GFS does with this storm. After the weekend, it pushes it or it curves it northwards, directly hitting Florida. There it goes. By a week's time, Monday, the 11th of September, that is a direct impact on Florida. A real pasting going on there. And then it pushes um, northwards uh, through into the early part, early part of next week. This is Tuesday the 12th, heading up out of Florida in towards the southeastern part of America, so sort of the Carolinas, that area, being hit by this uh, severe storm 
and then it rapidly as it moves it further northwards into inland areas of eastern America, it uh, very quickly starts to die a death as it loses its um, its identity, it loses all of its energy. But that's very devastating weather hitting initially the Caribbean islands and then moving up in towards Florida in around a week's time. This is a chart from wetcentral.d for North America. So um, this is for Saturday, 6 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, at which point um, it is firmly hitting Cuba. There, of course, is uh, Florida. Now we push on and uh, we know that uh, the GFS wants to bring this storm into Florida. So this takes us to 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday, the 11th of September, when Irma is a major storm system pushing northwards into Florida, giving a real uh, pacing to Florida through the early part of next week. This is to Tuesday when it's up into northern parts of Florida, next Tuesday, I should say. And then the storm carries on north out of Florida into parts of southeastern America, where it'll be a tropical storm by this point, and it very quickly starts to lose uh, its identity. That's all the GFS. What about the ECM uh, WF? This is the uh, position of Irma with the ECM WF at the moment. Let's see where the ECM wants to take the storm. So again, it's running it in towards Puerto Rico by the time we get through to Thursday. Uh, and then over towards the Dominican Republic, just off the coast of the Dominican Republic on Friday. Direct impact on Cuba by the time we get through to Saturday. So this part of uh, this part of the forecast, I think, is uh, likely to come off. It's going to hit these islands, I think, and it uh, gives some pretty devastating weather. The curve northwards is a little way off. So uh, by Sunday, we see the um, ECM is starting to push that uh, storm up in towards the south of Florida. It does give Florida a direct impact. Uh, and then it sort of curves it up the eastern seaboard, actually, beyond that. It doesn't move it into Southeast America. It runs it up the uh, east coast. So I think the American part of this is still a little bit uncertain, whether we do get this direct hit on Florida, and then whether it runs up the eastern seaboard, or whether it goes into the southeastern corner of America. That is still a little bit uncertain. The islands, Caribbean islands, being impacted uh, through sort of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I think that is uh, very, very likely now. And then we've got to see where we do get this curve northwards from Irma into uh, Florida. But obviously, it uh, is going to be very impactful over the coming days. We'll be hearing a lot about it. It's currently Category 3. It's likely to strengthen. So Category 4 may get to Category 5. So we'll be hearing a lot about Hurricane Irma in the coming days. We'll be getting you updated. Of course, let's have a look at where the next week, 10 days closer to home. These are the 500 millibar height on the flow charts from the Penn State University uh, website. We've got the ECDF here on the top. GFS, have a look at it in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 millibars, 80,000 feet is an area in the absolute high pressure. Low pressure are being moved around by jet stream running above. Blue is extrapolating to low pressure. Orange and red to high pressure. Look at this. This is the uh, mean flow chart for 7 to 10 days. Take this to the middle of September. And we've got a really deep trough of low pressure, not just over UK, but over many western parts of Europe with a jet stream doing something like that. That looks really unsettled, be a lot of heavy rain coming in with that. But GFS is very similar again, trough of low pressure is through the UK and many western parts of Europe. More of a ridge in the Atlantic, but it's not doing a great deal for us. It's sending a jet stream like that. So the second week of September is shaping up to be very cool and very unsettled at the moment. GFS uh, temperature and precipitation ensembles, next couple of weeks looking like this. Uh, red line here is a 30 year upper air temperature average. We're currently significantly above average, actually. We're in a very humid air mass, although it doesn't really feel like it because it's really cloudy and damp, but actually it is quite warm at the moment. By the middle of the week, uh, temperatures are cooling off. And then it looks like we're going through quite an extended period of pretty cool weather, really. Later on, into the second half of September, this period just here, we might start to lift the temperature uh, back closer to average. That's a very long way off. It looks like the next week to 10 days after today and tomorrow's sort of warmish air, uh, it looks like it's going to be quite cool. 
And you'll notice a lot of precipitation spikes coming up as well. So not too much in the next two or three days, but from the end of the week into weekend and next week, have lots of rainfall spikes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is likely to, uh, we are likely to be bringing in quite a lot of wet weather from around the end of the week onwards. Temperature anomalies uh, from the 4th through 12th of September are looking a little bit uh, cooler than average for Western Europe generally. British Isles is close to average, but probably on the cooler side, if anything. Much of France, Germany, uh, low countries coming out cooler than average in the week ahead. Precipitation anomalies are generally average to above average through many central and western parts of Europe. But dry weather looks like it's down in the southeast of Europe. Over in America, the east-west split continues. It's probably playing, playing in, at least in part, to uh, why we're having such an impactful hurricane season on the uh, southern part of America at the moment. So again, we see uh, western states coming out very significantly above average with the temperature anomalies. Eastern states coming out very significantly below average with the temperature anomalies, and this has been the case throughout most of the summer. Precipitation anomalies, much of the state is coming out drier. Notice how wet it's looking with the anomaly uh, down across Florida, however. Uh, and this is the anomaly from today, the 4th of September to the 12th. Most of that is coming from the 24-hour period in around a week's time. Back to uh, us and uh, Europe then, and uh, we've got the GFS for Friday, where we bring quite an active area of low pressure in across the country. That looks uh, wet and windy to end the week. We've got low pressure then sitting out to the east of us over the weekend, putting down these cool and showery northerly winds. This is quite interesting up here. We've got quite a lot of high pressure appearing uh, way to our north, up over the uh, uh, up over the Arctic. That's a very unusual place to be getting high pressure in September. You don't tend to associate September with uh, northern blocking. So um, quite unusual to be seeing sort of high pressure nosing out of the Arctic uh, in September. Anyway, we go beyond the weekend start of next week, bring another system through on Monday. That's been quite a lot of uh, wet weather. You can see from the black line here that the jet stream very much on a northwest southeast uh, trajectory. So not only is it unsettled, but also on the cool side a budget bringing the air down from the north. It is like to be quite chilly. And then beyond that, we run up towards day 10. Another area of low pressure is waiting in the wings uh, to sweep in across the country through the middle part of next week. This is Wednesday 13th of September. Looking very unsettled. Low pressure bringing a lot of heavy rain at that point. We finish up on day 10 which is Thursday the 14th of September, still with the wind coming from the north, still low pressure close to the country, and uh, looking very cool and unsettled up to the middle of September. EWF is very similar. All begins really this unsettled spell on Friday with quite a lot of rain pushing southwards and eastwards across the country into the weekend. We keep it unsettled. Low pressure is centred to our east, so we bring the wind in from the north. This uh, disturbance just here is more prolonged outbreaks of rain getting ready to sweep in uh, suddenly into Monday. That's quite a significant area of low pressure by midnight on Monday. That's bringing lots of wet weather across the country in the second half of the coming weekend. And then beyond that, running up to day 10, yes, we're keeping it unsettled again. Another area of low pressure, this one running in across the south, brings some notably wet weather, I would have thought, to much of England and Wales. All the time, the wind remains from a northerly type direction, so not only is it unsettled and wet, it's also looking quite cool as well. This is shaping up, as I said at the beginning, to be a very unsettled uh, spell of weather that's coming up for the second week of uh, September. These models might be going a little bit over top with this. Uh, as ever, we have got these storms, I've been explaining this in the videos recently, we have got these storms in the tropical Atlantic. Very exact um, developments and movements, of course, does create a lot of uncertainty downstream. We're downstream of all of these storms, so it has knock-on effects for us. However, we've got pretty good agreement between these two models. At the very least, we're going to see an unsettled spell coming up. So I think that's what we've got to go with. Uh, it does look like it's going to be quite unsettled for the end of week, into weekend, and then into next week. Whether it's quite the onslaught that these models are showing today, or something a little bit more toned down, um, uh, that's to be determined. But it does look like first half of September going to be quite cool and quite unsettled. We'll keep you updated, of course, with the coming 
I mean, for developments over the coming few days. Right, that's all for now. That's brought you up to date with all the latest. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.